So in your opinion, if your protocol had been established and distributed worldwide, if people had recognized that this is a way to deal with early treatment, you think that the overall number of COVID deaths would have been significantly reduced? I testified in the U.S. Senate November 19th, 2020. I told Americans under oath that 50% of the lives at that time could have been saved. We were at about 250,000 deaths based on what I knew. I then testified on March 10th, 2021 in the Texas Senate, sworn testimony. I upped that to 85% of the deaths could have been avoided. We know that because we carried out studies. We did one with Proctor here in, in Dallas-Fort Worth where we demonstrated that even the early primordial protocols before the monoclonal antibodies, when we use drugs in combination, were associated with 85% reductions in hospitalizations and deaths compared to fair comparator groups. In, for death, we used the Tri-County Area and DFW averages age-adjusted. And for hospitalization, we used the Cleveland Clinic calculator, which is a very precise estimate of the risk of hospitalization. Then uh, simultaneously, Derwand and Zelenko showed that from our own New York data, and then Didier Rial showed it from Marseille, France. So we have three different areas showing early multidrug therapy as an outpatient works substantially, and we've had a giant loss of life, a giant number, millions and millions of unnecessary hospitalizations. Uh, and it seemed to me, and I, listen, I've told Tucker Carlson and many others, it seems to me early on there was an, an intentional very comprehensive suppression of early treatment in order to promote fear, suffering, isolation, hospitalization, and death. And it seemed to be completely organized and intentional in order to create acceptance for and then promote mass vaccination. So you believe this is a premeditated thing that they were doing. So they realized that in order to and get people enthusiastic about taking this vaccine, the best way to do that was to not have a protocol for treatment. It's not just my idea now. It's completely laid out by the book by Dr. Pam Popper, the book recently published by Peter Bregan, uh, COVID-19 and the Global Predators, We Are the Prey. I wrote one of the uh, introductions, Dr. Lee Lee and Dr. Vladimir Lysenko wrote the other introductions. These books are basically nonfiction. They have a thousand citations in the Bregan book showing how it was coordinated and planned. Now Bobby Kennedy has his book out, The Real Anthony Fauci. I'm the most uh, uh, mentioned physician in that book. I can tell you that if you want to find the evidence that Moderna was working on the vaccine before the virus ever emanated out of the lab, if you wanted to find the, the collusions and the operations between the Gates Foundation and Gavi and CEPI and Pfizer and Moderna and the vaccine manufacturers and the Wuhan lab and the National Institutes of Health and Ralph Barrick and University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill and how all this was organized. If you want to see the Johns Hopkins planning seminar called the SPARS pandemic in 2017, where they had a symposium, people showed up, they wrote up their symposium findings, they published this. It says it's going to be a coronavirus. It's going to be related to MERS and SARS. It's going to come over here to the United States. It's going to shut down cities and frighten people. There's going to be confusion regarding a drug, hydroxychloroquine or ivermectin. And we're going to utilize all that in order to railroad the population into mass vaccination. It's laid out in the Johns Hopkins SPARS pandemic training seminar. The only thing they got wrong was the year. They said it was going to be 2025. Instead, it landed a few years early.